it's starting. Hello everyone and happy International Women's Day. We're very excited for you to be able to join us uh, for our One Health Social Sciences Initiative webinar that is going to focus on the small work groups. Um, the aim is really looking at highlighting some of the work that has been ongoing with the small work groups and offer an opportunity for other members to be able to participate and contribute your expertise to these diverse activities um, that are being working on in these different groups. Uh, today, we hope to be able to promote the leadership of these groups and some of their activities and learn where you can contribute to some of these work stream activities. We hope not just a webinar to present their work, but also an offer a dialogue for you all to offer and connect with other One Health Social Science um, members. So my name is Helena Chapman. Um, and I will, I'm honored to serve as your moderator today, along with my colleague, Veronica Ormea, and also our facilitators today, are Bernardo Moreno and Severin Tis. The One Health Social Science mission is to strengthen the network of individuals who incorporate social science concepts and methods and research application initiatives that link human, animal, and environmental health. And our vision is a global community with the capacity to incorporate the One Health approach through social science concepts and methods. This meeting is being recorded and will be available on the One Health Commission website after the meeting. Over the last few months, we have had an outstanding um, opportunity to have these small work groups start to form and really to revamp some of these efforts. Uh, we have had uh, different co-leads uh, take charge due to the survey that was passed around in the fall of 2021 that really was able to identify some and form the framework for food systems and food security, infectious diseases, and pandemic control. So a special thanks to our co-leads who have really been able to help some of those frameworks. Currently, there are two small work groups that um, are inactive but can be reactivated pending um, One Health Social Science member interests, and that would be in climate change, environmental justice, and One Health policy. Again, these offer an opportunity for really action-driven work for professionals across the social science disciplines to work together to address some of these pressing One Health topics. And so today, our agenda, we're really excited to showcase two of our small work groups. We're going to, obviously, with our introduction right now, we're going to present uh, first with food systems and food security, uh, uh, led by Dr. Fizeha Moreira and Dr. Randa Bazi, and infectious diseases uh, by Dr. Alex Bomer, Dr. Abby Vanek, and Dr. Oop, and Dr. Joseph Ogala. So we're really excited for those talks. Um, and then we'll have an opportunity to discuss and share some, some questions as well as just overall discussions on these groups and hopefully be able to connect you to these work groups for future activities. And then we'll close it. So without further ado, we'd like to introduce you to two outstanding leaders, uh, doc, uh, uh, Dr. Fizeha Moreira and Dr. Randa Bazi, who have been co-leading the Food Systems and Food Security Small Work Groups. So the floor is yours. Just tell me when to pass the slides. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, first of all, happy Women's Day. Uh, I'm Randa Bazi. Uh, I'm also the co-lead of the One Health Social Science Sciences Initiative for the Food System and Food Security Small Work Group with our supervisor, Professor uh, Fasia Moreda. Okay, so we are going to have an overview about our work, a small work group, uh, the concept of One Health and Food System, uh, understanding the problems, the overall group, uh, goal, 
primary objective, uh, objectives, target groups and the stakeholders, uh, proposed activities, the timeline of, of our small work group and the evalu evaluation of the outcome. And at the end, we're going to discuss the feedback. Uh, globally, our society faces a lot of challenges related to feed, house, and how to provide a healthy lifestyle, um, while preserving at the same time the environment and the natural resources for the benefits of the future generation. In order to meet these challenges, sustainable food production and environmental stewardship is, is paramount and will require a one health approach. There is a need for a holistic and systematic approach to, solve, to solving these problems by assembling multidisciplinary team composed of experts from health sciences, environmentalists, and social sciences. I apologize. We, I, I thought that we're going to introduce ourselves, but we skipped that part. So could we, could, could you please just go back to the slide that um, are just to introduce our ourselves as a colleague? Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, Professor Fisia Morida, he, he's from uh, Ethiopia. He is uh, the anthropographic researcher, doctoral fellow of an Addis Ababa University. Uh, also, he's going to be the supervisor of the of our small work group for the. Uh, we're going. We're going. We are having two uh, subgroups: the research group. Uh, while me, I'm Brenda Bezi. I'm a veterinary doctor and um, specialize in public health. Currently, I work in the regulations, and I'm, I'm residing in Jordan. Well, thank you so much. I apologize. I apologize. So after that, uh, not this slide. Next, please. Okay, we just want to understand the concept of one health, which is that kind of interdisciplinary science that focus on animal, on the interaction between animal, human, and the environmental health, okay? So we need to, this approach can be applied to food safety, sustainable food production, and environmental stewardship by bringing together interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary team to create a One Health Network to address these challenges. <clears throat> Next, please. So the concept originate from one medicine, a term coined by, term, oh, okay, sorry, it, it's a term coined about that interaction between one, one uh, about the human health, uh, animal health, and the environmental health. Um, the scope of animal of One Health is impressive and growing. Much of the focus of One Health has been limited to emerging infectious diseases. Yet the concept clearly embarrasses environmental and ecosystem health, social sciences, ecology, non-infectious diseases, and the chronic diseases, wildlife, land use, antimicrobial resistance, biodiversity, and much more. So these goals are to control and to combat diseases, ensure food security, save environmental quality, and uphold human values in society. Failure to do this is a threat to public health. So we're going to discuss the, briefly what is the concept of food system and, food and, and safety. Food system exemplify the complex of interdependence between human, our physical, our physical environment and other organisms. Changes to our food system, bo both as a short term, as a short term shocks or long term trends have a direct impact on human, animal and environmental health. So also the food system can include a broader economic, a social and natural environment that support, supports them. Linking food system and One Health approach closer together in research is a significant area of opportunity to enhance sustainability and inclusive. So this is one of our objectives is to, is to find that link between food security and one food system, food security, and one health. And in addition to that, adding the so the importance of social science to this kind of research. So 
So to understand the problem, food system from local to global face a complex of a complex set of challenges in the 21st century. Secondly, uh, globally around 820 million people suffer food insecurity and experience chronic hunger and undernourishment. Most of these people live in extreme poverty, earning less than two dollars per day. The prevalence, thirdly, the prevalence of climate variability, emerging diseases, disaster, disrupting agriculture production, food availability, access to food and utilization and stability of food. Any of these can contribute to outbreaks of diseases in human and animals that have a huge impact on food security. So, as we mentioned, the overall goal to examine a one health change. So, our small group, our small working group, we are just aiming to examine one health changes from the team's country, each of our, because we came from different countries. Uh, they came from Europe, from US, uh, from Middle Eastern countries. So we are we need to 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 examine the one health change from each country. If we couldn't examine any of these uh, changes, we can okay instead of each country, no, we can discuss a region, okay, and its association with food security, and propose relevant solution to address the changes. A one health approach anchored in understanding of food system is needed to develop primary prevention methods. Our primary objectives is to assess the food security level of participant countries and one health approach. Also to recommend the most effective possible uh, suits of indicators to help stakeholders meet their food security and safety. Okay, next please. So our target groups are the pastoralists and the farmers. Okay. So in order to implement our, our groups, we have proposed two kinds of activities. A research activity, uh, which will be recruited by the research team, and the supervisor is going to be Professor Moreda, while we have another one, which is the webinar planner and the social media team. Okay, in order to, to share more knowledge about one health changes and food security, and how the social sciences also are related to that. So um, th this is these are our two teams. Next, please. The timeline we started our first meeting at the th uh, the timeline is going to be around six to nine months, so till the end of the year. But our first me meeting last week it was at the third of March. We have discussed about the activities of uh, each of each team and the deadline to submit. Uh, the team member is going to be today in the evening. Um, on the 15th of March, we're going to discuss the research topic that we're going to work on. On the 15th of April, we will want to prepare for the first webinar. We want to finalize everything. And the 15th of May, we're going to discuss one more time the research. But during this time, the member, the team member are going to work together. The 15th of June is going to be a follow-up of the research, also follow-up for what evaluating the social media content is so much important, how many posts are uh, are shared per, per week, uh, what kind of uh, social media channel they are using, um, LinkedIn or Facebook. And the 15th of July, also we are going to follow up. Uh, at the same time, we, during this period, we can discuss what kind of webinars we can, we can do, uh, well, and a lot of things, but mainly we are right now focusing on the first two months, on April and May. Till of the end of the year, we are just going to do following up and uh, following up the web, uh, the research and the social media content. And the 15th of September, we need to prepare webinar number two. And on the 15th of October and also the 15th of November, we need to finalize everything. Maybe till the 15th of December, we can do another webinar. Please, next. We need to evaluate our outcomes. As we mentioned, we are doing each in each meeting per month, we are evaluating our work. Uh, so the proposed outcomes is to highlight the importance of one health in food security and its impact on sustainability of global communities, 
raising awareness to World One Health and food security through social media. Feedback of the mechanism, uh, feedback mechanism is our first drafting by the co-lead. Then we need to share to discuss it with the working group. We did that last week and uh, we had a positive response from the team member. They are excited for that. Uh, getting feedback and at the end we need to refine to improve our work and activities. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rhonda. And uh, Fizeha, did you want to share any other comments um, from you? Yeah, uh, I want to add some points. Please. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Thanks for uh, joining to this small working group discussion. Uh, my name is Fusa Morada. Uh, I'm a doctoral fellow at uh, Addisa University, College of Social Science. With me, I'm a social scientist, uh, particularly I'm an ethnographic uh, researcher. So uh, to add some points here, as we know, the global human population is expected to uh, reach 9.7 uh, billion by the year uh, 2050. So as the uh, human population continue uh, to grow, we face a really uh, increasing uh, challenge. In addition to that, uh, population growth, disasters and transboundary uh, diseases like uh, zoonosis, uh, or zoonosis diseases and other issues uh, pose an enormous uh, threat to food safety and security. So there is a need for, uh, for this multifaceted uh, problem. There is a need for uh, a holistic and systematic approach uh, to solve this problem by assembling uh, multidisciplinary teams composed of experts. Uh, they might from health science, environment, and social science. So uh, this team, which means this uh, small working group, uh, aimed to engage the public in outreach and education that will facilitate uh, consumers in understanding the importance and complexity of ensuring animal health, food safety, food security, and sustainable uh, food uh, production. Uh, in, other, uh, in addition to that, educational institutions around the world are working to implement educational framework that uh, integrate one health and transdisciplinary competences to enhance the food safety, animal health, and public health workforce. So uh, when we prepared this small working group, we aim to uh, solve the multifaceted uh, aspects of social problem uh, through using uh, this uh, multidisciplinary or we can say transdisciplinary uh, uh, in that forms, especially in the interface between uh, human, animal and uh, environment. Uh, so food system research uh, has a lot to offer. Uh, I believe that uh, this uh, small working will uh, offer the one health approach, uh, high profile issues that require a one health approach, namely, for example, zoonotic disease and antimicrobial resistance are challenges that are in food system and ultimately affect uh, the mass well. So a one health approach uh, anchored in understanding of food system is needed to develop uh, primary prevention uh, methods. That's why I think we formed uh, such a marvelous uh, team. So this is the point uh, I want to add. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I love your words, a marvelous team. And definitely this group has really showcased the importance of food security and safety with the background, with looking at some innovative activities to bring that to the forefront, looking at some papers, webinars, social media content, among others. So, um, and you have two amazing co-leads who have definitely showed their enthusiasm and, and expertise in social sciences to bring to this topic. So uh, let's wait for the discussion period if there's any questions, but definitely feel free to uh, think more about how you can contribute to the food security and systems uh, working group. All right, well, without further ado, we'll go to our second group today. I'm really excited to uh, showcase the work of the small work group for infectious diseases. We have Dr. Alex uh, Baumer, uh, Dr. Joseph Agola, and Dr. Avi 
Vanek, uh, who have been leading this over um, the last few months as well. So how about I pass the floor, um, I believe to Alex and Joseph who are both online. Can you hear me okay? Perfectly. Oh my word, <laughs> I'm so glad that I've literally only just been able to connect properly. Um, so I'm very glad about that. Um, Abby, are you with us as well? Um, hi, I, I, I am, but just barely. Do you want me? To, uh, do you want me to take it, Abby? If you don't mind, I. Yeah, hundred percent. Don't worry. Right. <clears throat> um, hello, everyone. Thank you very much um, to the team previously. Um, that was a really interesting um, kind of presentation. Uh, what, we'll, what we'll do is a uh, very quick introduction, and then I'll take you through um, kind of what we've been up to over the past couple of months and also what we're going to get up to over the next 12 months and what we envisage doing as part of our working group. Um, so my name is Alex, I'm a veterinary public health specialist and medical anthropologist at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. The past few years I've been working with UNICEF, the US, CDC and a number of other uh, agencies on lots of really interesting projects with regard to the crossovers between human and animal health, human and animal conflict, and as you can see from the bio sketch, um, my ongoing research works on systems of knowledge, um, looking at developing disease surveillance systems, and um, actually ironically I've just come from finishing a lecture on the role of anthropology in one health, so I'm kind of ready for this today but Joseph and I mean Abby you don't have to introduce yourself if you don't feel up to it but Joseph do you want to introduce yourself briefly? Okay thank you uh, hi everyone I'm Joseph Ogola I'm a public veterinarian and uh, at the moment I work with the government of Kenya as a veterinary epidemiologist so much of my research focus on emerging zoonosis looking at the domestic and the wildlife interface so basically we do, I do a lot of surveillance on rodent and backbone viruses in Kenya. I also have an uh, interest in uh, tackling AMR, uh, working with other partners in, through collaborations. Thank you. Perfect. Um, I'll quickly, have you okay, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly come in. Um, my apologies, uh, <clears throat> folks. Sorry, I've got a really, really bad allergy and it's, it's clogged everything up. <clears throat> uh, I'm, my name is Abhi Vanak. I'm a, uh, an ecologist and a senior fellow at, at uh, an organization based in, in India. It's called ATRI, uh, Ashoka Trust for Research in Ecology and the Environment. Um, and uh, I use my ecological background to better understand how uh, the disease, eco disease ecology of zoonotic diseases and uh, risk of transmission across the human domestic animal wildlife interface in uh, one of the most densely populated parts of the world uh, with high levels of biodiversity as well as lots of livestock so it's it's all it's a good mix up soup in here um, I'll let you guys carry on thank you thanks Abby um, okay, so yes, we are the Infectious Diseases uh, Unit as part of this initiative. Are you right to pop on to the next uh, slide for me? Thank you, and the next one. <laughs> Amazing. So I'm going to be very brief with regards to the background. So our aims really as a group, or the overall goal and rationale for this working group is to forge collaboration across disciplines, countries, and research institutions with the common goal of increasing social science contributions to the One Health agenda. So we really want to draw on the vast experience of ourselves as co-leads, but also with our members, and really kind of expand this group so we can gather as much expertise as we can with regards to One Health, social science, and infectious diseases. We also want to build new networks. These are networks to researchers, which I'll talk uh, to you all about in a second, and kind of form new projects, new grant applications, new fellowships as a result of that. Now, um, we're also going to be running a few workshops, we're going to be running a, a few seminars, lectures, as well as kind of coming together for networking opportunities, but I'll like, explain that to you um, later on, and that's our really our short term. And the long term, as you can see from here, is to really start to expand this network of researchers who are wanting to put together projects but aren't quite certain of who's working on what and where. Um, 
and really expand our reach. And that's not only within our academic circles, but within kind of further public uh, spheres as well. Next slide. There we go. So yeah, this is just the basic of we wanting to connect researchers and research. And one thing that we asked members before um, Christmas break um, was we really we sent a survey out to every single member. This is quite a large group. I don't know what the sizes are of each of the groups currently, but on our mailing list we have over a hundred members at the moment. Um, so we sent out a survey to them all to ask them what they would find most useful from being a part of this group. And it was amazing, we had a really, really high uptake within this survey. Um, so in a typical social scientist way, I uh, <laughs> looked at all the data, picked it all apart, and then put a, an agenda together based um, on that. Um, but yeah, this is the idea is the timeline that we're gonna come on to in a moment is very much developed from the members rather than from us as co-leads. We just facilitate the development of these events and also kind of arranging the programming around uh, what they best see fit. Next slide, please. So we had our launch meeting um, just over a couple of weeks ago, um, which was really wonderful. We got opportunity to meet some of the members, uh, understand their backgrounds, their research expertise, um, we have a wonderful, wonderful, diverse uh, range of experts in this group and also a real diverse um, kind of a group, all varying different professional levels, whether this is down from a master's PhD level all the way through to professors um, and those working outside of academia that are working within the NGO sector, uh, etc. So it's really nice to meet those. We give them opportunity to introduce themselves and us opportunity to introduce ourselves to the group and what our plans were for the next 12 months. I think the, the key thing is to be realistic and not overpromise um, and look at, okay, what is going to be useful and what is going to develop actual outputs and outcomes. And I think that's very important to differentiate and to kind of focus on both. So from March, we're going to do our first seminar. We're currently looking at the moment on um, how to write uh, grant proposals for One Health subjects with social science. Um, kind of featuring as the dominant uh, discipline and how to work interdisciplinary within One Health research with regards to infectious diseases. So we'll be taking lead on this first seminar, we'll be providing our own expertise, our own experiences with regards to how to successfully attain funding. We'll also talk to individuals about how they may think about putting a grant proposal together, a fellowship proposal together, which looks at the social dynamics of infectious diseases within One Health agenda. Um, the, we're also going to talk about, as I said, how to work collaboratively. So this is a working cross discipline. So how do you get, for instance, social scientists to work with vets, medics, environmental health specialists, and etc., and use our experiences to really kind of um, inform those about what we found challenging, but also what we found fairly successful. Um, another thing we're going to do is, and this is what I'm putting together at the moment, is a cloud-based open access network. So this allows all of our members to find out who's working where and on what. There was a similar thing that got sent out a while ago, which was on a spreadsheet. Um, it's quite helpful, but it's not the clearest thing in the world. So instead, I'm going to make it a little bit more interactive, where you can click on a country and see kind of who is where and then what subjects they're working on. So I'm about halfway through developing that, and it will go live at the end of the month. All be well. Um, and then April, we're going to do our first workshop. So our workshops will focus on social science methods and analysis, grant writing, and how to put together One Health Social Science Research Projects. These are going to vary depending on the feedback that we get from the members from each of the sessions. Um, but again, most of us have delivered qualitative data collection and analysis workshops before, for example. Um, I've just literally this morning presented on more than human anthropology, how do we conduct more than human anthropology, how do we do multi-species ethnography within public health or infectious diseases. So these are the styles of kind of workshops that will be running. Um, and then we're going to bring in some things for early career researchers, for PhD students, master students, master students which is such as a three-minute thesis style or the lightning um, presentation styles that you may have seen before. And this is really to give people opportunity to test their ideas out, to get a feeling for their, their research, whether this is, okay, I'm not quite sure if this is 
if this is has legs essentially to be able to turn into a research project what do you think and then get feedback from their peers um, and also just give master students and phd students specifically opportunity and experience in presenting and especially within a, a safe and supportive environment so i think it's going to be really important for them um, and as you see these seminars will also run throughout the period We'll also focus on data collection methods, specific research areas, how to work collaboratively. We can also review papers and projects. Um, and you'll also see here we're going to look at opening a, an open access job board. So again, there was one on the One Health Commission website. It's a little bit out of date now. So the idea would be that if we see anything that's relevant, um, that it will just we we'll use survey, uh, I think survey monkey. Um, that will just automatically just send out an update say hey if you're interested this is an opportunity that's coming up in infectious diseases with regards to social science and one health lens um, we're also going to host a few guest lectures and then deliver workshops uh, that are a little bit more targeted so we're going to look at peer, public and community engagement 101 um, so i have quite a lot of experience in public and community engagement and the idea would be to bring in other professionals um, to look at how can we Kind of uh, increase the capacity of the researchers within our group um, there's a potential quite a lot of people asked for a conference or a day-long workshop this is something we can do but i'll leave that till later on in the year um, that will be dependent really on engagement throughout the year to make sure that there's definitely the one for it and we can explore that um, and then a lot of people also asked for, uh, for a session on lessons learned from the field um, obviously a problematic term um, however this is essentially research and data collection experiences and what we would have wished we had known before setting off um, and kind of yet to share our expertise um, from collecting uh, this type of research next slide please wonderful this is quite a boring one uh, so i do apologize uh, the evaluation of outcomes so how we do evaluate this so within the short term, we'll focus on outputs, specifically seminars, workshops, and networking. Um, the intended purpose of these events is to begin to build our foundation from which we can start to generate outcomes. So there's the, that differentiation there between the outputs being the primary to start off with, and then the primary will shift to outcomes later on. And the long-term goal is to encourage collaboration across disciplines and research within the group. Um, an evaluation of any collaborations, partnerships will be recorded on an open access document that members can contribute to through a secure link. This will be on a, uh, a cloud-based server, very much like the network um, that was being built um, and be accessible, accessible from anyone within the group. Um, and a further outcome will be measured, um, the inclusion of social science inputs in ongoing One Health research projects. So this is when people will let us know whether or not they're adding this in. Um, and the group will also look to increase its visibility. Next slide. And lastly, I think this is the last thing. Um, so member recruitment, um, we are, I mean, we're, we're fairly lucky in that we already have a fairly large working group um, who seems to be pretty active and certainly we get a lot of, I get a lot of emails from. Um, again, what we're going to do because we have various time pressures is we're going to leave it at word of mouth at the moment. So this is talking to the members that are already present within the group and say that they you know, ask if they can reach out to people they think may be interested. Even in the first meeting we had, they said, oh, am I okay to invite X group? I'm okay to invite this person. Absolutely. This morning, giving the lecture to Master of Public Health students. Again, I plugged this group and said if they'd be more interested, this is how they can join. So this is what we'll do to begin with. We'll see the success of this. And if we need more targeted recruitment processes, we can also bring that on later on down the line. Next slide. There we go. Thank you so much, um, Alex. And let me um, also, did I want to give the floor for any other discussion from Joseph? Thank you, Alex, for uh, that uh, nice presentation of the work. And uh, basically, <laughs> our group aims to reach out to other members because we have diverse background and we want to harness this uh, diversity in us and to bring out the element of uh, social science in One Health because sometimes we think of One Health and we we don't sil we silently mention uh, social science. So we really want to encourage uh, membership so that we can 
tap in from this diverse experience to gain more. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Um, and Abi, I just want to pass it to you if there was any concluding comments from you. Um, nothing from me. Thank you. I think everything's been covered. Great. Well, thank you for our outstanding leaders, um, Alex, Joseph, and Abi, for this small work group. It was a very, very comprehensive uh, with many activities from workshops, seminars, flash talks, really trying to engage even the early career um, uh, focus and in expanding networks, uh, public engagement. So lots of activities for you to get involved in. So special thanks to our co-leads for your time to be able to to prepare this and do these surveys and really build the small work group based off of this feedback. Um, infectious disease is a very popular topic. So I hope that all of you who are interested in that can engage um, since you have three outstanding experts um, in different fields, different geographic regions as well. Um, before um, moving on to the discussion, I wanted to pass the floor to uh, Dr. Shell Stroud, the Executive Director of the One Health Commission for any uh, kind of comments as we're starting to develop these small work groups. Hello, oh, Helena. Thank you very much. And congratulations to the One Health Social Sciences and its working groups for the work that I see is ongoing here. This is really exciting. I'm especially to hear that um, you've got a, a hundred people involved in um, the small work group that just presented. And so excited to have anthropologists stepping in and getting actively involved. I'll just make a couple of observations. Um, you are right that One Health Opportunities Bulletin Board is um, probably out of date, but I'll just point out that it's actually um, free and available for anyone to submit and actually post things there. So you can help us keep that up to date. Um, we could, if you wanted to, we could even create a, a small section, a separate section just for social sciences, although I think that might be creating silos. Um, so just to be aware that you're very welcome to use that bulletin board if you do find opportunities that you'd like to bring forward. Or, um, and, or you can um, set up one of your own, whatever works really well for the group. Um, I would also urge um, the small working groups to be sure that all of their um, participants are on the Global One Health Community Listserv so that you can take advantage of the One Health Happenings newsletter that goes out month, uh, every month toward the end of the month. That really is a high kind of global perspective of what's going on um, in the One Health space, in the One Health community around the world. And it's really exciting to see everything that is happening. The newsletter has become quite long because there is so much going on. It goes to the Commission's um, Global One Health Community Listserv, which is now over 15,800 people. It has jumped up almost 6,000 since the start of the pandemic. So it, that tells me that there is a need that, um, you know, just as um, just as the previous speaker pointed out, we really kind of need to be figuring out who's doing what in this space so that we can find each other and join hands and find our synergies and really um, leverage um, our, you know, be um, force multipliers by working together. So uh, thank you so much, um, OHSS leadership for organizing these small working groups and for putting together this webinar to share this information. And um, the commission stands ready to support in any way that it can. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, and again, just a, a very special thanks to our small work group leads, Paseha, uh, Randa, Alex, Joseph, and Abi for your time and support to develop this over the last few months. It is not easy to be able to pioneer small work groups um, and you've done an outstanding job. So thank you. And the leadership team, um, uh, Bernardo, um, Veronica, Severine, uh, and Cheryl, and myself, we all are all here to be able to support uh, the continued formation of these small work groups. Uh, so we want to bring it to you, so I'm going to uh, connect you now to Veronica uh, to be able to moderate any types of questions that you may have, some informal dialogue uh, before closing. So Veronica, the floor is yours. Thanks, Elena. Thanks, uh, thanks to the colleagues. It's very it has been a very special moment. Uh, for me, it's now 10 a.m. and it has raised my energy actually to see how these two groups have developed an, a very good overview of the problem 
the, the task of the working groups, for example, of the infectious disease and the food system. Um, we have this idea of the working group since some months ago. So actually seeing you participating and also considering uh, the participation of everyone in the group, in the working group is very special. So now it's time for the it's question time. I will see if there is any... Okay, I will read. It says, uh, great job getting things work on the track. Ah, it's Laura. Thanks, Laura, for, for being here. Laura was a, a, a member of the OSS. Actually, she's always involved. She's always um, here, no? In, in, in her name, her presence. Uh, let's see if I have other thing here. Ah, yes, I have. To the infectious disease team, how do you see the role of anthropology in One Health, particularly in your interdisciplinary work? Is from Bernardo. So I have um, Alex, Joseph, and Avi or Abby to answer that question. Who wants to take it? I'm happy to, but I'm also aware that I always talk. Okay, I'll give the answer to that one. Then. Um, so actually, um, it's a that's a really really great question. Um, and that, that I'm very thankful. I've just spent two hours presenting on it. So the role of anthropology in One Health um, is, is 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 ever emerging. Essentially, I'll give you a couple of case studies. So two of the projects I'm working on at the moment. One is the development of the novel Chadox RBF. So this is a One Health vaccine, so it's identical for both humans and animals. So my role as an anthropologist in that vaccine trial is to identify potential barriers and facilitators to the vaccine's deployment by understanding attitudes towards um, an engagement with previous vaccine deployment um, kind of efforts, and also looking at the crossovers between human and wildlife or human and livestock specifically vaccine programs. So understanding whether or not experiences with uh, livestock vaccines affect human uptake and vice versa. So the role of myself there is to predict and prevent potential barriers to vaccine deployment, and then also feed back into phase two, phase three clinical trials to tell the manufacturers, to tell the um, wet lab scientists um, how to modify their vaccine based on the attitudes and responses that we've been we've had from rural livestock farmers. Another way is we use um, so ethnographic methods. So as an anthropologist, we do a lot of tacit knowledge construction observations. So we're looking at non-verbal means of communications to be able to allow us to understand changing patterns of disease behaviors, uh, changing animal population numbers. One of the biggest projects I'm involved in at the moment, this is the one that I've been developing for a few years, um, called Preventing Patient Zero, essentially works with poachers, hunters, scavengers in um, southern Uganda and in the impenetrable forest. And it really taps into these systems of knowledge that these individuals have with regards to wildlife species, specifically gorillas, doika antelopes, uh, porcupines, etc. cetera, um, with the idea of tapping into this knowledge to predict and prevent pathogen spillover by identifying epizootic disease um, kind of outbreaks as a precursor to zoonotic disease outbreaks. So from a One Health perspective, we're coming in, A, not only to prevent pathogens fellow, but that affects human health, but also if we are alerted to epizootic outbreaks, we can then send vet techs who we work with, with the local NGOs, to then assess the animals, provide any health care that's required, and then from an environmental health perspective, what we're attempting to do by bringing poachers, hunters, scavengers on board is reduce the community's reliance on their local environment, i.e. the impenetrable forest, and provide them with alternative livelihoods, whether this is animal tracking, whether this is um, coffee plantation, avocado plantation, which again, controversial subjects and something that needs to be hashed out quite a lot. Um, but the idea of the anthropologist in that position is to really tap into those systems of knowledge in order to better predict and prevent pathogen spillover. Thank Thanks, Alex. Can I, can I add some points? Yes, please. I was going to ask that. Okay. Uh, regarding our context, uh, food system exists at uh, different scales, which means globally, regionally, nationally, and locally. 
So local food system around the world are very diverse and location specific. They share some key features, but any attempt to change them should reflect their uniqueness resulting from tradition, cultures, and other uh, uh, points. So regarding this, the role of uh, anthropology is very uh, critical. In fact, the scope of one health is impressive, broad, and growing, but much of uh, the recent focus of uh, one health has been limited to emerging infectious disease, which in some contexts uh, uh, rejecting the social science aspects. Uh, let me tell you uh, my experience regarding as an ethnographer researcher. I had the chance to engage in research regarding zoonotic disease in uh, some parts of northern, northern Kenya and uh, uh, southern uh, Ethiopia, especially in relation with uh, social practice. So uh, the role of uh, anthropology was really uh, great, especially in terms of how the social uh, practice, in terms of identifying how the social practice promote and prevent the prevalence of uh, zoonotic disease and other things. So anthropological studies really brought many unobserved or unsee issues in the four uh, front. So I believe that the role of anthropology is uh, really critical, especially in terms of one health aspect. Uh, thank you. Yes, it's actually really important that in every working group, we have to recover or remember the question that how do we integrate social science or anthropology or social sciences studies in our small working groups? That is actually the, the aim, the objective. Uh, I will go to the assistant, the assistant. It's in Spanish here, so I was going to say assistant, but. The, partic the participants. And Laura has a question. Laura, the, the mic is yours. Are you there? Okay, I will go with Jill Tawe Ungak, that also has a question. Laura, I see now that you're raising your hand, but cannot hear you. Maybe you can write the question in the chat and I read it. And I still, I still see that you have the question mark, but um, cannot listen to you. Uh, I have other questions for the food system working group. And actually, I just read it today in the morning that it was written uh, from Richard Seitman in the Impactor that he wrote something about a food system and that obviously sad, uh, sadly war um, environment. So, um, any comments on that uh, for the food system working group? How will you connect, especially the pandemic moment and also this uh, beginning of the war? How will they may impact in the in the food system approach? And how can we involve them in the one health social science small working groups activities? Um. Dr. Morido, can I answer it? Yeah, yeah, okay. you can. Yeah, yeah, please, if you wish, you can go ahead first. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, we used to discuss kind of these topics uh, with our team last, last in our first meeting, and we would like to create a, uh, to, to create a webinar that discuss that kind of um let's say uh more more focusing food science social science uh, so, uh, sorry food security social science and let's say environmental health or climate change in a webinar 
But in our research, you know, we're going to focus on One Health, food security, and the social science. Mm -hmm. uh, please, Dr. Morita, if you wish, you can add anything as. Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much. Especially uh, when, when we say environment and food, food system, especially in terms of environment, uh, we are mainly uh, focusing on rangeland hills. Rangeland hills uh, without environmental uh, concept, I think, will be uh, nothing. Because uh, in pastoral society, everything is interrelated with the rangeland hills. In a sense, it has also an environmental issue. So uh, in the food system, uh, we try to, or we aim to incorporate environment for the sake of uh, bringing sustainable and climate really resilient food system that are really uh, a key ingredients for achieving many of the sustainable development goal, which was uh, stipulated in um, SGDS. So this is the assumption in terms of uh, environmental aspects. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for these answers, and thanks for um, have a previous talk with your with your members of the small working groups. And also about that, I have a previous question. Um, what worked and what did not work in every small small working group? For example, let's start with the food system. A small working group. What did work and what did not work during all the um, uh, arrangements, talk, talks with your members? Uh, at the beginning, uh, we face we face because we are three co-leads. Unfortunately, the third co-lead didn't reply back to us, and so that was what that was the main issue that we I faced it with. Dr. Morita. But as for the team, actually they were so, because we're not a big team, we're around 15. So our members, and no, we are so smooth, everything went so smooth and uh, and we are, most of them are university students and so, so everything went smooth. We didn't face any issue with the members. Please, Dr. Morita, if you wish you can add something else. No, no, I don't have. But yeah, also, you. 15 members is a huge number, actually. <laughs> um, for the infectious disease, working, a small working group, what worked and what did not work? I think, I mean, the hardest thing for us, especially moving forward, as well, looking forward, is times for meetings because our group is all over the world and it, uh, us as co leads, we're all in completely different places trying to figure out times that work for most people that ensure greatest levels of engagement is quite challenging. So I think our way to resolve that is that we will establish what times that we're all available and then we'll record the sessions and then share the recordings with all the other members after each of the sessions. Joseph, do you want to add anything? Yeah, maybe what I can add, what worked well for us is uh, we, we decided to set up a poll so we can ask members uh, what areas of interest that they will want to, to share, that they want us to engage. So it really made it easier for us now to have these ideas together, condense them. So when we had our meeting, it was easy now to focus on what we need to do. Yes, and you may ask why I, why I am asking this question. No, but it's also important that um, maybe between these these two groups they're representing now, uh, what have worked and what have not worked, what will uh, what can what can I also add to my uh, small working group? No. Um, okay, Laura, I, maybe I can unmute you for the question. Let's see. No, I don't know why I cannot unmute you, but she wrote the question. Are there any intentions to submit anything to the upcoming social science meeting? And maybe you can also read it. Is the nine international conference social science meeting? For the for the two small working groups, do you have an intention to send something? Mm -hmm. 
I think for us, uh, we have not discussed that at the moment. Okay, and I also have Bernardo again. Another question for the food system. Bernardo, if you want, you can also open your mic. I don't have any other questions. Oh, yes, please. Okay, so let's see. I will I will see again if there is chat. No more questions. And Elena or uh, Cheryl, any other question? Otherwise, otherwise, <laughs> I just uh, conclude. Just one second. Okay, I didn't receive anything. Well, again, I will thank you. Uh, for the for the organization for keeping uh, the participation of every member in the working group and and also to congratulate the the colleagues because i think it's very maybe demanding but also exciting opportunity to uh, re reunite and also to congregate every member you no know? as alex says uh, there are members from any parts of the world so it is very important to list uh, um, next step that we have as uh, OHSS, um, you can ask for the participate for the um, certificate. Of I think that, that was um, if I can unmute Doctor Piseha. Okay, yes, thanks. Uh, because there was a, a last social, one health social science webinar, um, and. If you want the copies for the presentation, please contact uh, the colleagues of the small working groups of food system and food security and infectious diseases. And if you want to stay update of the announcements, please go to the uh, One Health Social Science Initiative uh, updates. That, as also Cheryl mentioned, it also appears on the newsletter. And again, I'm very happy, and I think also all the OHS uh, members are happy to see that you have um, you have a very good overview for the next month, and, and let's say have a, a very exciting opportunity to reunite. Um, nothing more. <laughs> okay, so maybe you will listen uh, or you will receive another communication on the coming weeks or or, or maybe next month for the next step of the OHS small working groups. And again, thanks so much for your participation. And I see a chat. <laughs> okay, thanks, Dr. Dr. Moreda. Nothing more, okay. Okay, with this, we conclude the meeting and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.